Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to layer. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna give you this example and I wanna show you how different it sounds without the actual layer. So uh, here's the track I'm working on and here's what I started building it around. It's just this um, actually like tidbit of a glitch sound and it sounds like this all together. So I heard this little chord in the beginning. I thought, okay, you know what? I feel like, like there's some type of vibe here. So I started uh, duplicating it and I got this pattern. So it sounds cool, but it does sound really thin. So I thought, okay, let's add a sub, um, you know, maybe that'll thicken it up a little bit. So we have this made sub within Serum here. I can show you what that looks like. So it sounds like. So we just have an analog sine wave here with AC hum, and then we're using some distortion. So a pretty basic sub too. So if we combine those two, it sounds like this. So that fills in a little bit. I thought, you know, it still doesn't sound full enough for a drop element, which is what this is in. So let's start finding layers that we can add. So the first way you can go about doing this is, of course, you can make a MIDI track and then you could go in and you can write a chord or you can write uh, notes that are going to sit on top of your sample. So I have Serum automatically load up here and we can go through. So we're in E minor here. I can go through and grab like an E. And then if I wanted to really stretch it out to add some more like harmonics on top of it, I could go up to like a um, another E maybe, maybe go down here to G maybe if i even wanted to grab the b in there too so you could layer like that you could just add serum presets or serum midi whatever it is and that's already filling it in a lot because there's a lot more data coming through this chord i would Another way I like to do it to really add in the extra thickness right at the get-go so I can really actually follow through with the idea and not feel like it's too thin is just find samples that I like to layer on top of it. So we have these different samples that I kind of cycled through here that you can see are some are deactivated and whatnot. So let's go ahead and mute this and then I can show you what we layered with to get a better sound. So a lot of the times I like to layer with something that is like a super saw that has a lot of information in it that's going to be <coughs> really stretching out the chord to make it sound even more full, maybe a little bit more tense so i tried layering it with this one so it adds a lot more and this is just like a one shot uh, saw wave so we have a little bit on top of that one and we pitched this one a little bit around so it would fit into the scale so again together and without so it adds a lot of that kind of mid frequency and then i thought you know that one doesn't quite work let's try something that's a little bit different so we just found this pad sound and we were just messing with that one to make it fit within here so again without and then with. So basically, as you can see, you're just focusing on what this sound is lacking. So we have a lot of high end kind of sparkle with the top sound, and then we're adding some mid kind of more distortion with the bottom sound. So we have that one to kind of pair with it. And then I went in an opener sound. So we're actually pairing this with a bass sound that sounds like this by itself. And then if we layer it with our top sound, and then we could actually throw the second one in here. So we add some more into it. Now, to add more variation, especially with layering, it's really simple. So all we have to do is just find a sound that's gonna complement the top sound as well as the bottom, and then kind of mix it in well, and then it sounds even fuller. So for the second part of this, I actually found this little hit that I liked. So just a little vocal shot, and we were able to make a little pattern here and layer it as well. So again, it just sounds like this by itself. Adding in our second layer that we actually turned the volume down in. And then we add that extra hit on top of it. So we can get a little bit more of a full sound. And then we just added another bottom layer here. So just add in a little bit more depth. So this top one, we have some uh, delay and reverb. And this bottom one, I don't know if it's pitched or not, but this one is just adding some more depth to it. That's a more of a dry signal just to further enhance that starting sound. So again, we have this kind of thin sound. We're adding sounds that are going to complement it. So more mid distortion, we have a bass sound, and then we have some more kind of top end melodic sound to go on top of it just to vary it a little bit. Now to add a little bit more kind of tension with it, we can find or write chords that are going to have more tension built into them. So if we want to add things that are going to have maybe like on top of a E minor chord, you want to add the C note or the B note, just add some more tension. Or if you want to go up octaves to add more depth to it, we have options in that too. So here's another sample 
sample I found that we're varying the B drop with. And it's just kind of this wobble. It's going to sound pretty different because we have a lot of effects going on it. Um, so let's go ahead and turn those off. That way you can just hear what it sounds like by itself. So it sounds like this and it's pitched around a little bit. So if you um, do hear the sample like in Splice or whatever, um, it's going to sound a little bit different, but we do not care. And then with the effects. So we just have that sound. And again, we're looking for sounds that are gonna complement our main sound. So um, even though it's not quite layered, it's complementing, uh, it's acting as sort of a layer to kind of fill in the sound. And then of course, when we introduce everything back here together, uh, it's all gonna work together. So if we actually go back to our regular sound, we add our secondary. And then we add our main kind of drop B sound. They're all working together, that more min, more fullness, I'm a little bit more on the sides to make a more overall complete sound. So let's go ahead and listen to it all together and you can hear what I mean by extra layer sound like. So let's go back to our first drop here and this is what it sounds like without the extra layers. And then if we add in our extra layers. So it makes a pretty big difference. So to summarize, to layer, we're looking for sounds that are going to complement. So if this top sound was going to be more mid heavy, we're going to find something that's going to add some more high harmonics to it. In this case, where it's more high, we're going to look for more mid, more distorted sounds that are going to add more layer to it, more depth to it. So overall expanding the depth of the sound as a whole, the two layers combined. And then if you want to add even more to that, find a sound that's going to complement that in this case I have a vocal sample, you might want to switch out the sample or the chord to make it have a little bit more suspense or tension. And of course, all together, make sure whatever it is, especially in a drop case, is that you're layering it with a thick distorted sub to fill in all the low end because we're always cutting out the low end when we make like a drop or something like this. So I hope this helps. I hope that you do take layering into consideration because it can make a really big difference. But that's all I have for you today. Again, thank you for watching and we'll see you again in the next one.